recently in the Brian Koberger hearing, um, you know, we've been, I mean, at least in the past couple of hearings, we've been, been hearing Ann Taylor talk about her investigation into this case. Um, we have heard her use the phrase innocence um, phase and also mitigation um, and talk about her needing, you know, these materials to investigate the police's work, essentially, uh, because this is a death penalty case and, you know, how much she's putting into it. And she cited some like standards and things like that. And um, I myself wanted to understand a little bit better. So I looked some things up. So I wanted to define some things. And it's really just meant to be an open conversation because like earlier, you know, we read um, as a breaking news topic that the Gonzalez family feels like a delay game is being played here. Not that Ann Taylor is justified in doing this investigation, checking the police's work, making sure she has looked into every ounce of the discovery to make sure her defendant, you know, the client is getting a proper trial, a, you know, a fair trial, an honest trial. Um, well, it's also the way that the victim's families will know they got the right guy. Right. Because if Ann Taylor looks through every bit of it and can't put up a good defense, you know, and has some of the top leading experts looking into it and can't put up a good defense, like, then, you know, he's the guy. Um, so what is the guilt innocence phase and punishment phase? So Ann Taylor specifically just calls it the innocence phase. It's actually called the guilt innocence phase. Um, it's the first part of a criminal trial focusing solely on determining whether the defendant is guilty or innocent of the charges brought against him. The phase involves these key elements. One, jury selection. Two, presentation of evidence. Three, defense presentation. Four, closing arguments. Five, verdict. The punishment phase is if the defendant is found guilty in the guilt innocence phase, the trial proceeds to the punishment phase where the focus shifts from guilt to the appropriate punishment for the crime committed. The key elements of this phase are number one, additional evidence. During this phase, both the prosecution and defense can present additional evidence and witnesses relevant to the defendant's background and character circumstances. Two, mitigating and aggravating factors. Now, this is the mitigation phase that Ann Taylor's talking about. The jury considers mitigating factors, such as the defendant's lack of prior criminal history or mental health issues, which may warrant a more lenient punishment. Conversely, aggravating factors, such as the severity of the crime or a history of violence, may lead to a harsher sentence. So, the purpose of the mitigation um, is the death penalty is intended, obviously, for the worst of worst crimes. Um, in order for the juries to determine whether a particular defendant deserves a sentence of death, they must weigh evidence that this murder is actually one of the worst of the worst. Mm. Yeah. Against uh, the reasons for sparing him or her, the mitigating, which are the mitigating factors. Um, so, I mean, that's why she's looking into his family history, all of these different things. Because if he is found guilty, you know, the jury has to justify putting him to death. Like, are there mitigating factors that mean that mean we should go more lenient on him? Yeah. What are the aggravating factors? I mean, I think if he's convicted, the death penalty is happening. You know what I mean? Like, they're not going to take that away. Mm. So, anyway, going back to the next phase after the mitigation phase is jury deliberation, um, where after reviewing the evidence presented during the punishment phase, the jury determines the appropriate sentence. Number four is the sentencing. And they call it the ch the tale of tr two trials. Okay. So it's the guilt innocence determining the guilt or innocence of the person, and then second is punishment and deciding like what should they be sentenced with? How harsh should we be? Yeah, yeah. 
no, that's interesting. I think it's interesting to know that just because we've seen Ann Taylor talking about this uh, just recently. And she, I think she intentionally dropped that, you know, innocence phase, innocence phase, innocence phase every chance. It, she, she doesn't say get. guilt, innocence. She says innocence phase. Yeah. 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 Right. Which is kind of funny. <laughs> it is. It is funny. And I, for for those of you that might not watch our live streams, okay, um, that recent hearing was insane. If you don't watch our live streams, yeah, I suggest that you at least watch this video because the amount of information that we went through uh, was almost everything that they talked about. And I think that hearing was very eye-opening. However, there are people out there that uh, I watch sometimes that I know they believe that Brian Koberger is guilty without a doubt, all right? Um, and they watched that and felt like it was a strong hearing for the prosecution, which I don't understand how. I have no idea. Uh, it, to me, it wasn't a strong hearing for either because they no. don't even have the discovery if everything's true. So um, I I just don't understand how you can think somebody has a strong they're they're literally waiting on the cast report. You guys, do you understand that? So take away the placement of Brian Koberger anywhere at all that night. And the prosecution has a strong case. Well, not only that, all the proof of stocking. That they supposedly have. Yeah, literally take away his location at all, anywhere. Right. Yeah. 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 So then they have touch DNA, which can be blown or picked up in the air onto an item. And that's it. Yeah. Like, that's what you got. Pretty much. And video. At a supposedly. party house. So, um, moving on, I wanted to... Like, think, is what Ann Taylor's doing here actually necessary? Like, is she being, is she being, like, overzealous in a way where, which I don't know how you could argue that. Like, it's a death penalty case. Like, she should be following all of the standards. She should be doing her job to the best of her ability. Um, so to argue she's doing her job too good by following the policies and procedures too much is kind of an absurd argument to me because <laughs> it sounds like she hasn't been able to completely do her job because she can't get her hands on all the discovery. And when she gets it, she has to organize it, which takes forever before she can even dig into it. You well, know? she's not even getting it when she's getting it. And what I mean by that, you guys is like, uh, so she will ask for specific evidence because that evidence is not in the current log uh, or file of evidence. And then they'll come back to her and say, hey, we don't have that. I don't know why that's there. And then she'll come back to them and say, well, let me prove to you that this evidence is out there. And then they'll come back and say, oh, shoot, sorry, I didn't realize that wasn't sent over to you. Here you go. And they'll send her a jumbled up pile of madness that she has no idea that goes in what file. And like, mm -hmm. oh, man, it we so in the breaking news, in one of the breaking news topics, we talked about the Gonzalez Kernodal uh, statement where they just want no delays. They want them to get it together. Uh, I, I have I don't know what they could be being told by prosecutors or police that makes them feel like you know ann taylor is playing games when both the prosecution and the defense have said they don't have this cast report i don't understand i i i feel really bad for them because i i kind of feel like they're being misled it makes me wonder if the fbi never planned on giving a cast report and they're doing it now because the state begged them to. I'm telling you, I've said that from the beginning. I've wondered. Because this is really late in the game when Brian had a right to a speedy trial to be completing a cast report. Like, look how far we are into this. 
that should have been done already. Mm. For sure. Um, so anyway, these, what I have next is the standards for the appointment and performance of counsel in death penalty cases. Um, and this is by the NLADA national legal aid and defender association. Now I'm going to scroll all the way down to the investigation. Um, and it says in this part, which is standard 11.4.1 investigation, A, counsel should conduct independent investigations relating to the guilt innocence phase and to the penalty phase of a capital trial. Both investigations should begin immediately upon counsel's entry into the case and should be pursued expedi expedi expeditiously. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, B, the investigation for preparation of the guilt innocence phase of the trial should be conducted regardless of any admission or statement by the client concerning facts constituting guilt. So no matter what, if, if Brian said, look, Anne, I'm guilty, she still has to do all of this investigation. Um, C, the investigation for preparation of the sentencing phase should be conducted regardless of any initial assertion by the client that mitigation is not to be offered. This investigation should compromise efforts to discover all reasonably available mitigating evidence and evidence to rebut any aggravating evidence that may be introduced by the prosecutor. So, hold on. I'm looking for the part where it talks about actually investigating, like, the evidence. So it talks about examining the charging documents, which obviously, um, it talks about, you can raise like constitutional other issues, um, of double jeopardy to attack the charging documents. Um, an in-depth interview of the client should be conducted within 24 hours of counsel's entry into the case unless there is a good reason for counsel to postpone the interview. <laughs> they should seek information concerning the incident when, you know, interviewing him, uh, explore the existence of other potential sources of information relating to the offense, the cl client's mental state, um, Collect information relevant to the sentencing phase, which could be and not limited to medical history. You know, we saw medical history we documents, did. Yep. Um, mental health, physical injury, alcohol and drug use, birth trauma and developmental delays, educational history, achievement, performance, behavior, educational needs, like literally anything in everything about somebody's social history, including physical, sexual or emotional abuse. Uh, prior record, you know, criminal record, thing like that. Seek necessary releases for securing confidential records. Obtain names of collateral persons or sources to verify, corroborate, and explain. Uh, then potential witnesses, okay? Counsel should consider interviewing potential witnesses, including eyewitnesses or other witnesses having purported knowledge of events surrounding the offense itself. The, uh, B, witnesses familiar with aspects of the client's life history that might affect the likelihood that the client committed the charged offenses, possible mitigating reasons for the offenses, and or other mitigating evidence to show why the client should not be sentenced to death. And then C, members of the victim's family opposed to having the client killed. So you remember she was talking about like 400 witnesses? Yeah. That means old friends of Brian Koberger if if they could have mitigating information that means like they have their mitigating investigator like their mitigation investigator that she talked about who it literally formed all of her own family tree yeah that has nothing yep. to do with the IgG That's so right. she's digging into the family she's digging into anyone and everyone who knows Koberger anyone and everyone connected to the crime in any way. Yeah. So that's what the, the crime or suspect. Now, Ann Taylor did not say they're going to interview 400 witnesses. She said 
there are 400 potential mm -hmm. witnesses. Yeah. Yeah. Which is interesting. Really interesting. And I wonder if that is an average number for most cases. I don't know. Like there that is a potential. Because it almost sounded like she was talking about some kind of standard. I don't see 400 in here. But thinking about that, like thinking about all those factors that they're saying right there, that it's like family members. It's anyone familiar with the client's life history. Yeah. Eyewitnesses or other witnesses having purported knowledge of events surrounding the offense itself in this small town. Like that could include WSU mom, Kim. Yeah. Her kids. Mm -hmm. That could include any, like literally all the frat guys. That could include Anon Harsh. I could include any of the neighbors. Yep. And it, it can include police, like so many people. It's literally anyone that is in that area. Yeah. So, and I saw, saw people talking about that number and they're like, that's ridiculous. And I'm, I was, that just makes it make sense why that is potentially how many witnesses are involved. Yeah. You know what I mean? No. Oh, yeah. Yep. I think at a college <laughs> for me, it makes sense though. I never questioned it. I was, yeah. I heard it. And, and to be honest, I was like, oh yeah, that sounds about right at a college. Right, right. Um, and it also says they need a mitigation specialist to conduct uh, the interviews. The police and prosecution council should make efforts to secure information in the possession of the prosecution or law enforcement authorities, including police reports. Where necessary, council should pursue such efforts through formal and informal discovery unless a sound tactical reason exists not doing so. I wonder what a sound tactical reason to not seek discovery would be. Uh, so it's, I would assume if it just doesn't have anything to do with the case whatsoever. Yeah. So, you know. yeah, physical evidence. So it says that they should make a prompt request to a police or investigative agency for any physical evidence or expert reports re relevant to the offense or sentencing. So it's saying they should make that request promptly and that they should go to the scene. When appropriate, they need to view the scene. And this should be done under circumstances as similar as possible to those existing at the time of the incident, including weather, time of day, and lighting conditions. Interesting. Which they did not go there during that time of the day. They were there during the daylight, weren't they? Yeah, but who knows what kind of window coverings and things they had, you know, that could impact that. It it might not have done anything. It might have done something. I I don't know. I'm not sure. Hmm. But, you know, the house stood up for a full year after, so it, they they could have gone in during November of, you know, 2023. I was hoping I would find something and I you know, I was thinking about this because I was thinking like, when should a cast report be done? And when does it typically get done in a case? You would think before the speedy trial right runs out. Yeah. Yeah. I think it. I if I'm remembering correct, I thought six weeks, but I don't know. I think it would depend on how rushed the situation is because, you know, it, what they're waiting on is what we talked about multiple times multiple multiple times that you not only need three towers you actually need four towers because the fourth one's a quality control after you put together your chart and your triangulation then somebody has to go out there in person to verify the strength and numbers mm -hmm. to make sure that they actually match up in person to what you're seeing on paper and on the computer and uh then it has to be peer reviewed right by random selection. So, and they're waiting on that. Yeah, that's what they're waiting on now at this point. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. It's definitely interesting. But to be honest, it's not surprising to me. Well, honestly, if they went and conducted the drive time this far after the crime, I think that could be an argument against their evidence. 
because you're yeah. supposed to do that driving test as close as possible to like when initially this crime happened. Yeah, yeah. It, because it changes. Yeah. The network uh evolves and changes and they will have made updates and uh and uh network updates, tower updates, things of that nature. So if I was Ann Taylor, I would absolutely be asking for the entirety of the history of those towers from the time of the crime to the time of the drive test. And I would look for any updates, changes, uh, you know, antenna replacements, anything like that. Yeah. So if, if the prosecution, the FBI waited all this time, okay. And only started like actually developing the cast report. Like you said, what it takes six weeks and they're waiting on peer review. Like what if they only started it like a month ago? And they did the drive test. That would be absurd. Yeah. That is horrible. That, That's enough time for them to install a completely new tower. Yeah. And that throws off everything. Yep. Yep. It sure does. And I actually, one of our viewers told me they are going through a big overhaul to upgrade the cell towers in Moscow. The whole county. That's interesting. Isn't it? I mean, kind of, I guess. I it, I don't know how they would know that because cell towers aren't owned by the city. Yeah, I know. They're owned by carriers. Right. So it would be very rare for them to be like, hey, let's get all of the carriers, Frontier, Verizon, uh, AT T Mobile, um, uh, what's the other one? The Could other, the fiber one. Um, and then there's another one that's called like one or something like that. Let's get all five or six of these companies to come overhaul our city. I just, that doesn't sound very really like, I mean, I don't think that's what was being said. It could just be one cell phone carrier that's major there, like AT&T. And you don't think the city could say, hey, our cell phone service sucks, AT&T. Can you please come in and update your stuff? No, no. Everything is done automatic. So it, it's based on overall needs. Okay. So you get put on a list. Okay. Um, but, I mean, there, this is really, really long. I mean, it goes through basically all the standards that Anne has to uphold uh it talks about plea negotiations um it talks about all kinds of things um but i thought it was interesting about the witnesses i thought it was interesting like because we've read we've heard her read off these standards the whole time right yeah i didn't really understand what the mitigation was yeah, 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 yeah. Because uh, she, she talked about her mitigation investigator like a whole bunch and the and the mitigation factors and things like that. So, yeah, no, I think that is a, a, a really good thing to look into because that, that's not common knowledge. That's not something common that I think everybody knows about. But, you know, again, you guys, for those of you that are curious about that hearing, we never watch the hearing on our channel just because so many channels are covering when the hearing's on. I don't I don't ever want to feel like I'm like fighting other channels for viewers. I just think that uh, we have a niche of our own here, right? We we are Thought Riot Podcast. We're getting together to think these situations out because that's the, the number one way to figure out any puzzle is to think through it, right? And I feel like that's our strength. So, so I just, you know, we didn't, we didn't watch it live or anything like that. But we talked about everything. We went through it all, man. And there was so much juicy questions and issues that were brought up everything from you know the cast to uh ann taylor hopping up there and being like hey it's not bill's fault it's not bill's fault you know what i mean like right. doing her cheerleader dance for bill thompson to make sure that everyone understands that the the state and the prosecution is not to blame you guys it is not the state or the prosecution's fault 
It is the feds because everyone hates the feds, you know? And uh, the fact that the there were a couple major hiccups, though, in the state, you guys. When, when Bill Thompson came forward and made it sound like they're ready to go in September, or they were ready to go in summer of 2024, and then uh, 20 minutes later tells Judge John Judge that, oh, Judge, actually, we can't get the defense the full discovery until you know, after summer of 2024. And then Judge Judge right away responds and is like, wait, wait, wait hang, hang on here. What what do you mean? I, I thought we were ready to go for summer of 2024, uh, but you're telling me you can't get the discovery by that time. How do you think you're going to be able to go to trial without having full discovery? Like, I just don't understand it. I don't get it. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And then I think that is a massive boom that we talked about earlier where and and I'll use I'll use a very I'll use a very particular uh situation. So w- one of the examples that Ann Taylor used uh when talking about evidence is that she was told that there were no x-rays even though on the thumbnail uh, or on the folder or or in the metadata, it said there were x-rays. There were x-rays of the victim. She okay? had thumbnails of and, them. Yeah. And she went back to them and was like, hey, where the heck are these x-rays? I see that they're here. And they, they were, they first told her that there aren't any, you know, and then she was like, no, there are. Look at these thumbnails. They're real. They're here. So Help, help me get these things. And then they were like, oh, oh, okay, my bad. Somebody, I guess, didn't scan them in right or something. Uh, here you go and sent her a big, giant, jumbled up mess. Now, my question, though, you guys, here's my question, okay, is when you see smoke, normally comes fire, right? So how many things are there not being shared? as discovery right with the defense how many i think that's the big question with the igg and the dna is like what do you mean you don't have work product what are you talking about you did all this work on the computer all computers save every click and every single thing you do if you know how to gain access to it, especially if you're part of a corporate company and exactly. that corporate company like exactly. Authorum has to track for public safety and and customer safety and everything else like you have work product you know so why is that not being shared with the defense it feels shady you guys okay and i'm going to look at it from the point and perspective that brian koberger's guilty if he's guilty fine great let's prove he's guilty you're not doing yourself any favors here if he's guilty by not handing over everything you just hand it all over yeah. If exactly. that if there's enough evidence, condemning evidence for Brian Koberger, the court isn't gonna let him off on a stipulation. That idea is insane, dude. A you technicality. Know how many, yeah, you know how many times I've heard that? That like, well, you know, part of the reason they don't want to give everything over is they don't want Brian Kober to get off a tech off on a technicality. There is the only kind of technicality that would allow him to get off is if there was a hundred percent proof that there was police corruption and fraud. Yeah. Otherwise he's not just going to get let out because somebody clicked the wrong button because somebody made a mistake because somebody copied something they weren't supposed to because somebody looked into something like those little type human errors are not going to get somebody off. It drives me crazy. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think the argument is, is that Anne is looking for a technicality and look, I mean, going through this, like there's a, so this is about the pretrial motions. Okay. And how, how many things are listed on this? It's like 16 different things. And all of it is like looking at like his pretrial custody, the constitutionality of the implicated statue or statues, the potential defects in the charging process, the sufficiency of the charging document, like a PCA, you know, which she's gone through 
um, the propriety and prejudice of any joinder of charges or defendants in the charging document. Um, talking about, you know, the suppression of evidence if there's a violation to his rights. Um, and talking about his right to speedy trial. Um, mm -hmm. getting him access to resources, experts, things like that. Uh, matters of, you know, abuse of prosecutorial discretion and seeking the death penalty, like challenges to the process of establishing the jury. Like there's so many things, there's so many things. And I think that's why we see so many pretrial documents because she's going through this discovery and she's saying, this doesn't seem right. This doesn't seem right. On top of all the other things she has to do for him that she has to do like the change of venue. Like this is all her responsibilities. Yeah, yeah. That's something she's supposed to request. If there's any doubt he could get a fair trial, she has to file a motion. If well, there's anything that could go against his right to a fair trial or his rights to all of the discovery or, you know, any issues at all, she has to file a motion. She has to dig into it. Um, and when you're getting discovery, that is a jumbled up mess and incomplete. Like, can you imagine every expert report or police report you get? It says body cam footage or x-rays or this little picture or this video. And it's all broken into pieces like a video is, like she said, or they're not attached. The body cam footage, not yeah, attached. That missing. picture isn't attached. X-rays, not attached. So you have to go make another request. Like, no wonder there's so many, been so many supplemental requests for discovery. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you want to blame anyone for delay tactics, then who is it here? Yeah. Because Bill Thompson knows she has to do, do all these investigations. Mm -hmm. She has to consult all of these experts because it's required of every her. Every prosecutor knows. So every... to make it harder and load or overload her with evidence that is a mess and then not give her the things that are most important, like cast report, like apparently this very important video, like x-rays from the autopsies. Are you kidding me? Yeah, every prosecutor knows what a defense attorney's job is. Every defense attorney knows what the prosecutor's job is. There's no, there's no like secret, uh, you know, surprise moments. Right. There's nothing like that going on um, in court. But yeah, I, I mean, I find it really interesting. And uh, it just makes me question the whole process and makes me feel for like the Gonzalez and Kernodal, like that statement they made, um, and and understanding, like, yeah, I understand how you guys can feel like that. Um, unfortunately, if what the statements are in court are true, um, then neither side is ready and has the information they need to go to trial. So, like, who do you blame? How do you blame? <laughs> and when? You know. Well, I think one of the issues is Anne literally can't have her stuff together if the discovery isn't put together. Well, yeah. And what I want to know is could Judge Judge make a ruling to the state like, look, from now on, you put all of your evidence filed, organized, and if there's supposed to be something attached, you guys make sure it's attached and then send it to her. Yeah. Like, make sure you're putting it in some kind of systematic order so that she can get it and know everything's there so we can get the show on the road. Yeah. Because don't you guys have your evidence organized? Like, why wouldn't the state have their evidence organized? Yep. But I just, I think it's interesting going through all the things she has to look at, consider, and do. And I don't know why it would take her a whole year to get through all of this. Like, that still doesn't make a ton of sense to me. Does yep. it to you? No. So I don't know. I don't know if it really made it make more sense why it has to take a whole nother year. But I want to know what you guys think. If there's any um, additional ideas you have of why you think this is going to take a whole nother year. Because um, I, I even looking through all her responsibilities, I'm still not sure why. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I don't know. I I just I don't know. Uh, I know that the lawyer you know says that. Yeah, it's it's how it goes.
So I I just lean on a lawyer's knowledge and right. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah. Let us know.